The new system Disney World is using to skip lines is ripping people off and treating those who can barely afford to go in a horrible way. Would you like to know how and why? Well, we'll show you and how to escape this devious plan from Disney. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel where we explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve, and today we're going to do a deep dive explaining the new system that is cruel almost to families that can barely afford to go to the most magical place on earth. The magical margin uh, is what we're going to call this. This is out of WDWmagic.com and we're ready to explain this at a high level. I think you're going to be very interested in it. Click the like button if, you, uh, if you're so inclined. New Lightning Lane system launches today at Walt Disney World, what you need to know. Starting today, Walt Disney World's updated Lightning Lane system is officially live, bringing significant changes to the way guests can plan and experience high demand attractions, also known as they're going to stick it to those of you who could barely afford the trip in the first place. Lightning Lane Multipass and Single Pass. The rebranded services Lightning Lane Multipass and Lightning Lane Single Pass replace the old Genie Plus and individual Lightning Lane services. Folks, this is already so confusing to people who don't follow this deeply. It's just nuts. Wasn't it nice when it was called Fast Pass and you just you just took your ticket to the attraction and you said, hey, I'd like a Fast Pass. And they gave you a piece of paper and said, here's your Fast Pass. Come back in five hours and ride the ride. Go stand in line on the other ones, but this one in five hours, come back. Fast Pass. Boy, wasn't that nice. All right. Key features of the new Lightning Lane Passes. Here's where they're going to stick it to the poor. Advanced planning. Resort guests can now make their Lightning Lane selections up to seven days in advance, while non-resort guests can plan three days ahead. This change allows guests to secure their preferred experiences without the stress of last-minute decisions. So, a couple of things here. First of all, if you are a resort guest, you've got four days to, to gobble up the best uh, attractions, and that's it. If you're not staying at Disney, then you are four days behind the curve and you get the you get the scraps, okay? Now, why does that matter? Well, it matters because let's just think about the average cost of a hotel room for one of those Magic Kingdom hotels, all right? If you want to stay at the Polynesian, the Contemporary, the Grand Floridian, you get the idea. We'll throw in uh, a Wilderness Lodge, too, just for the fun of it. Throw in those hotels. What's the average cost? About 600 per night, all right? So you're going to go to Disney World for four days, right? Okay. So now you're paying $2,400 for those hotel rooms. And what do you get for that money? You get to be ahead of everybody else by four days and you get the premium attractions. So $2,000, that's the perk that you get for it. Okay. Now that disadvantages those who don't have that kind of money. But also, let's say that you are just a person who shows up because you don't pay attention to this sort of thing. You just show up and buy your tickets the day of. Well, you are behind two different groups of people. Not only are you behind those who have a resort, you're also behind those who planned out their visit. And by the way, this also throws in the can those who are annual pass holders who they're showing up the day of because good to go days. Remember that? Well, and, and if you don't remember that, by the way, well, it's confusing to go to Disney World anymore. That's what you should know about it. But if you're an AP holder, uh, if you're a pass holder and you show up, well, you're behind everybody. Uh, go spend some time in retail. Multiple day booking. Guests have the convenience of booking lightning lane passes for multiple days in one go, making vacation planning more streamlined. Now, if it was just that, the resort guests got some extra days or some extra lightning lanes. I would not have any kind of problem with that. If everybody got to book at the same time, I would not have any problem with that. I'm not trying to be a curmudgeon here. I'm going to show you why this is going to make it so that if you are not as rich as the people staying in the Grand Floridian, you're going to have a bad time. I'm going to show that to you right now. Here's the, here's the trick that they buried into this thing. What they've done is they've divided the attractions into tiers. Lightning Lane Multipass will have two tiers of attractions at Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Epcot. There are no tiers at Disney, Disney's Animal Kingdom. By the way, that's because there's just not enough to do at Animal Kingdom. And really, there's not enough to do at some of these other parks either, but we'll talk about that in a moment. All right, so at Magic Kingdom, tier one, this is the top of the stuff. If you want to do these things, uh, you get one of them. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, Jungle Cruise, Peter Pan's Flight, Space Mountain, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Now, I see nothing wrong with any of those except that Tiana's Bayou Adventure does not have the demand of these other rides. We're just pretending it does so that we can put it in tier one because it would be a terrible PR disaster to not have it in tier one. If you're asking for pro, pro, what's your advice on which one do I pick? Well, 
you don't pick Town as Bayou Adventure because you might waste your pick because you don't know if it's going to be running because it seemingly can't run. Okay, so of those, which ones should you pick if you're doing this lightning lane thing? Uh, and by the way, if it's not a peak time of year, do not spend on this thing. That's my recommendation because you're wasting your money. But if you're in a peak season, which one would I tell you to do? Well, it comes down to do your kids really want to ride Peter Pan's flight or not? And then if that if, if the answer to that is yes, spend on Peter Pan. If the answer is no, then you got to decide between Big Thunder and Space Mountain. And that's a preference you get to make up. I'm not going to tell you to spend on the Jungle Cruise. The Jungle Cruise is literally falling apart. They have scaffolding up on the attraction. I am not going to tell you to waste your money to, to block in a time to go ride a crumbling attraction. All right, so let's go to tier two because this really matters also. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to have a lot of people who are stuck in that tier one selecting what's left, right? Because they're not Grand Floridian Polynesian guests. So they're going to be picking Jungle Cruise or Tiana's Bayou Adventure because it's all that's left. All right, so here's tier two. All right, and I just want you to know, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point something really important out here. The reason they're going to be stuck with Tiana's Bayou Adventure and Jungle Cruise is because Haunted Mansion is more popular than those. Pirates of the Caribbean can be more popular than those. The Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh or Winnie Pooh can be more popular than those. If you pick the following ones, you are wasting your money flat out. If you pick Magic Carpets of Aladdin, or if you are forced to pick that because that's all that's left, you are being robbed. Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor Comedy Club. If you select that, or if you are forced to select it because it's all that's left, burn the money. Just set the money ablaze. That's it. I'm sorry. Dumbo the Flying Elephant. Same spot. You can go back towards the park's closing, and Dumbo will be empty nine times out of ten. Uh, Mad Tea Party. Sorry. You're wasting your money. Uh, and the reason is because there, there simply aren't lines to support these being down in Tier 2. It gets worse at the other parks, though. Now. The other parks have far, far less attractions than Magic Kingdom. And Magic Kingdom needs more attractions. So when I say that the others have less, look out. Now, this is where I think we get into the point where they're just ripping off people who don't have the cash to pay for this thing. Because this is going to make the lines longer, the standby lines, and not longer in the way of, oh, well, there's more people trying to ride it. But longer as in they don't move, so you get to stand there still. Uh, and bless your heart if you're out in the sun doing it. But also... Uh, the issue here is that because there's so few things, there are so few things to pick from, they're going to be gobbled up by resort guests. And if you pay money for this, you're, you're just going to get the scraps. And I'm going to show you why this is so terrible. At Epcot, tier one is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, Frozen Ever After, and Soarin' Around the World. Epcot right now is just flat out empty. It just is. Um, Soarin' Around the World, don't, don't spend. I'm telling you. Soren used to be a big deal. It used to have hour to two hour waits. It doesn't anymore. Remy's Ratatouille and Frozen. If you get one of those, take your pick, whichever one. I don't think either is a great ride. They're just not. They're just not great rides. Uh, Soren's better than both of them, but they're IP attractions in World Showcase, and people get stranded in World Showcase. You're like, okay, is there anything to do here? Tier two. And this is where, again, if you get, if you get forced to pick one of these because there's nothing left, you might as well just have been robbed. Journey into Imagination with Figment. That is a walk-on every day, 365. That is a walk-on. Living with the land. I love this ride. But don't spend money to skip a line for living with the land. It will be a walk-on at various parts of any day. Uh, Mission Space. Please do not spend any money to get to skip a line at Mission Space. There is no line. This is a nausea machine. That is all that it is. It has never been popular. They regret having built it. Please don't spend your money skipping a non-existent line for, for Mission Space. Spaceship Earth, please do not spend your money on one of my favorite attractions and a, an engineering marvel. Towards the end of the park's uh, operations, this will be a walk-on any given day of the year because people ride it in the morning and then they go ride other things. Just go back and ride it. Walk on. It might be five. It might be 10. It might be 15 minutes. You're, you're just being robbed if you're spending money to skip this. The Seas with Nemo and Friends, okay, legit. Turtle Talk with Crush, no, don't spend your money. It's a show. You walk into it. And Disney Pixar Short, uh, Disney Pixar Short Film Festival, this is the worst of all the offenders. You can watch any of these on Disney+. Plus. There is no line. It is a huge theater that will usually have about one-eighth occupancy, occupancy. You are being robbed if you, if you spend money to skip 
a line that will never exist at Disney Pixar Short Film Festival. Flat out. All right, Hollywood Studios. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Uh, Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run, Rock and Roller Coaster, and Slinky Dog Dash. All right, so all of these are decent rides except for Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run. Uh, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, it's good. Rock and Roller Coaster, great. Slinky Dog Dash, great. So finally, we've got some stuff to work with. Uh, just one problem. The most popular attraction that you could ride at Hollywood Studios is not here. And uh, that's a real problem. Oh, wait, there's another problem. I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, so Rise of the Resistance is not here. That's because they want you to spend money. Even if you're a resort guest, even if you spend that $2,000, $2,400 or more to stay uh, four, five, six nights at Disney, you're still going to have to pay more to ride uh, that one. And by the way, same thing at Epcot. Cosmic Rewind, you, they're, they're going to make you pay. You can try to get in a lottery, but they're going to make you pay. So that ticket that you're paying for that you thought that's going to get you in the door to these attractions, no, 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 no more. Disney doesn't do that anymore. That is the entryway to spend more money to try to get on the attractions that were advertised on the billboards as you came down I-75 or I-10 or whatever you did. That's the situation. Okay, so let's talk about this. Tier 2, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, Toy Story Mania. Toy Story Mania should be in that top slot. Alien Swirling Saucers, Star Tours. Okay, let's walk through some of these, okay? Um, if you spend on Tower of Terror, that is a great, that, that you did good. Skip that line. If you do it to skip Toy Story Mania, excellent. That's fantastic. You just skipped a one-hour wait. Good job for you. Alien Swirling Saucers? No. No. Please no. Star Tours? No. Please no. You It, it will be a walk-on at various points of any given day. Uh, Beauty and the Beast live on stage. There's never a line. This is a theater. You will go to any show. You, you have been robbed. You have Your money has been taken from you against your will. If you spend on that, Disney Junior Play and Dance, folks, they need to pay me to go do that one. Don't spend your money on this. Frozen Sing Along Celebration. Again, it's a show. You will you will get the exact same experience. You will go in at the exact same time. There is no monetary gain whatsoever. Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. Does it fill up sometimes? Sure. Will you still get in? You bet. You're wasting your money. And Muppet Vision 3D. Again, you are being robbed if, you've, if you're if you forced to get these. Now, why does all this matter? Well, because if the resort guests for four days take all the things that matter, so they come in and they grab up Twilight, Zone Tower of Terror, and Toy Story Mania, you know what you're spending on? You're spending on this other stuff that is, there's no value. There's zero value whatsoever. None, not it. It's worse at Epcot. And at Animal Kingdom, they don't even have enough to split it into these kinds of things where they trick you to get your money uh, and take it away. And part of the reason for that is because they're still busy doing Avatar Flight of Passage as a you got to spend money to ride it kind of thing. So there you go. And again, Disney Resort hotel guests and select hotel guests can plan lightning lane passes for their entire stay up to 14 days, starting seven days in advance. Other guests can plan up to three days in advance. So there you go. That's the deal. Also, by the way, they're buying those lightning lanes, those individual ones we talked about. They're buying them in advance, too. So good luck getting in the lottery. They want you to spend your money. Um, we've got the confirmed pricing. I just want to show this to you so you can understand what I'm talking about. Um, so Magic Kingdom, $30 for the lightning lane multipass, right? We talked about that. So 30 bucks. So whatever the actual cost of going to Magic Kingdom is, add $30 to that because they want you to have to buy this. All right, now on top of that, let's keep going. You ready? All right, so Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is not available unless you spend even more on it. So you got $11 more. So where does that put us? Well, that puts us at uh, just about $40. The ticket price rose $40 for every single individual. All right, what about Hollywood Studios? And again, I don't recommend you go to Hollywood Studios because there's nothing to do. But Hollywood Studios is $26. And how much is it going to cost you to do Rise of the Resistance? $22. What does that mean? Well, survey says that's $48. That's almost $50 extra on top of the ticket just to ride the ride you thought you were going to ride when you bought the tickets at the time. That's insane. That's insane. And remember that paying that money 
if you are not spending thousands of dollars at a hotel, means you will often, often be ripped off in ways that are incredible by these various rides that Monsters Inc. laugh floor. You're, you're just being robbed. Huh. That's the problem. That's the problem, folks. So what do I recommend? Go at, a, at an off-peak time and do not give them any more money than what you must to go through the turnstiles. I have ways to save in terms of getting tickets to Disney. I can't tell you them on this channel because they would close it down the next day. They're not illegal. They're not wrong. They're not immoral. They're not unethical. I just know the way to find savings. But I'm here to tell you, don't give them any more than you have to. That I can tell you. Go in an off-season time and do not pay for this stuff. This is ridiculous. Uh, the system that they've put in place, it not only leaves people with almost no option to pick from if they're not a Disney Resort hotel guest, but it doesn't advertise it that way to them. And, oh, by the way, the little girls and little boys who come with families who could barely afford to make it to Disney, they're the ones who suffer. And that's why it sucks. But folks, this video doesn't suck because, well, we tried to bring this to your attention. And we love doing so. Hopefully, it will improve the experience one day. The Pixie Dusters, the Cupcakers, the uh, the Disney religious folks, they're out there praising this company no matter what it does. I'm here saying to you, on one of the biggest Disney coverage channels on YouTube, I am saying, here's what's wrong. Disney do better. And if we don't do that, Disney never will do better. It is up to us to shine the light on saying, you should be pro-consumer, not anti-consumer. You should be pro being for all the little boys and little girls who are in your parks, who want to ride the rides, not punishing them because of the salary of their parents. It's already uh, terribly expensive for some of these families. Don't punish them after they've decided to attend your park. All right, folks, it is now your turn. Click that like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms, hit the notification bell, drop a comment down below, let us know your thoughts. And folks, we love spending time with you. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. It means everything to us. Until the next time, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Jose, what are you listening to? You don't even have ears. Vacation Radio 24 7. Original music on YouTube. Huh? Vacation Radio. WDW Bulls Music Channel. I have no idea what you're saying. But if you want to be listening to music, you should head over to Vacation Radio 24 yeah. 7 on YouTube. One of the 100 other channels WDW Pro's been working on. Oh! And I have a song for you, Jose. Jose Cowabunga! He is Jose Cowabunga! That one seems a little bit foreign to you. Uh.